Welcome, everybody. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, evening, wherever you're tuning in from. This is Spirit Matters with Dial, Kishore, and Achuta. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. We're coming in live from New York with our live virtual studio audience and all of you listening out there. Thanks for being here. This is your Bhakti Center's daily podcast. Um, and I'm just glad to be here with you guys. What's up this morning? We good. We're good. We're good. Thank you for being here, everybody. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed your message. And uh, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, yesterday, I remember we left off. Achuta specifically wanted to pick up on this idea that devotees are people. Do you remember that? She's like, no. Yeah, oh, no. We, <laughs> she remembers. She bookmarked it. We were talk. We've been talking this week about the idea of home. I'm just going to cue it up for us. Is that okay? We're talking about this idea of of home and and um, yesterday the idea of home being a place where and also the idea of just being. The idea of putting on a front of us, almost kind of like picking, it's almost kind of like when you ha when you play like a race car video game and you choose and make your car, like the idea of an avatar, like you choose the kind of person you're going to be. And it's like, we move through the world picking and choosing the kind of person we want to be that we think is going to get the acceptance and the validation and the approval that's going to get us our ticket into whatever social circle, family circle, that we think we're going to find belonging in. Um, and in the process, we end up kind of abandoning ourselves along the way, and it never really ends up well. So we're in this idea of like, being ourselves just being and creating an atmosphere with people around us acceptance where we can be. Um, and in spiritual circles, a lot of times we lose sight of that as well, because we put people on pedestals that we're supposed to behave in a certain way, be on a certain level of whether it's morality or behavior or thought process. And we kind of, um, we, we rob ourselves of the human experience that we are, we are inherently, you know, we're full of flaws and we're full of, of, we're all on a journey together. And so this, this term of devotee, really like a spiritual practitioner, somebody who's devoted themselves to a spiritual path, uh, we're people too. We're human beings too. And the more space we give ourselves for that and other people for that, um, yeah, the more real, authentic, genuine experience we have. And actually the more connection we feel with each other. So that's sort of the the cue, the the setup for today. I'm just volleying that to you to just spike it over the net, Achuta. You probably never spiked a volleyball before at, at five foot two, five, four. What's your height? I'm actually not five feet. I'm four eleven. Ooh, <laughs> four eleven. Four foot eleven. This is your chance to spike it, Achuta. I'm following. I'm volleying yeah. up this for you, and you're gonna spike it in the way you've never had before. So actually, I did. I have spiked a volleyball before. I was like thirteen, but I did it. You were thirteen. Were you still four eleven at thirteen? You're probably yeah. the tallest kid in your class. No, no. still. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I was never that. Never that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't really spiked one since then. <laughs> I've, I've never spiked anything. <laughs> um, so then we were also talking about this idea of boundaries, and uh, boundaries in life, boundaries in relationships, boundaries in spiritual life, and then this idea that there's spiritual life and material life, and sometimes there's just life. Uh, and, and we kind of left off with this idea of devotees versus non-devotees and how, you know, there was one very, very uh, poignant point made by uh, Swami that, you know, we shouldn't call somebody like karmis, which is kind of a, 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 a an Iskonite word. I want to say like a bhakti word, but it's not really. It's kind of like an is Iskani type word. Um, and we have this idea of like karmis or people who are performing karmakanda which is like this idea of like you know just working for the man materialistic got, attitude what's right, in it for me I, you know scratch your back i scratch my back yeah. i get something for everything i give kind of mentality right you know the corporate world no. <laughs> so you've got this idea of like karmis and how no one is inherently a non-devotee or a karmi because with krishna in their heart everyone 
is a devotee of Krishna, whether they know it or not. And everyone is devoted to something. Like I was talking to my brother about this just yesterday. Everyone has faith in something, even atheists, depending upon what you call it, you're, you're putting your faith in something, science, the universe, space, just my faith, un, unnamed as we might think it is, we're still putting our faith in something. Uh, and we see how Krishna makes arrangements for everybody to place their faith in something. But then that calls into question, then what exactly is it that we're putting on a pedestal? Because sometimes we can fall into a trap where, especially new to bhakti, you get into bhakti and everybody's on a pedestal, you know? Everybody's been doing this so much longer than me and you can have this hierarchy in your mind and not just in your mind, we do a good job of like perpetuating the hierarchy. You've got like senior and junior. And I was talking to a friend about this once and they were saying, you're like, I don't believe in this senior junior devotee nonsense. And I was like, right, I get it. But it it is so important for us to actually acknowledge that there does become a hierarchy when it comes to us taking responsibility for our actions. So sometimes if you've been within a spiritual community for 40 some plus years, there's going to be an attitude that you take responsibility for your actions. And so sometimes I feel as though we can kind of abandon that when we don't want to take responsibility for actions. We're like, I don't believe in this senior junior nonsense. It's like, yeah, you don't. If, if it falls on you to take responsibility, but you do believe in it when it comes time for respect, right? So we have this, this balance. And if we're really real with ourselves, Yes, there's a hierarchy that comes into play. And it often does come more into play when we think, well, why isn't somebody respecting me the way they should be? And then we have this idea of, should I be respecting this person? Like what's happening? You know, it, it all goes based on our sometimes qualifications, our actions, how we're taking responsibility. Uh, how we're showing respect for others, how we are showing up with an attitude of love and accountability and respect. And so sometimes senior, junior, devotees, non-devotees has nothing to do, just like the caste system should have nothing to do with birth or how long you've been a part of something and more to do with our actual actions, how we are actively showing up each day for our communities, each day for ourselves and our spirituality. So devotees are just people. And depending on our interactions with them and how we see our interactions with them as we go along, we can put them in the hierarchy, our hierarchy accordingly. But that is also subject to change at any moment. We should not think, oh, this person is a pure devotee. And then they're always a pure devotee. And they are not subject to the laws of material nature because we all are. Every single one of us are, including the Supreme Person. Even when he comes here, I mean, look at Ram. We went through a lot of Ram pastimes and so much of Ram Lila is him saying, look, I'm perfect and material nature is still doing its thing. And because he adores his material energy, he decides I'll look like I come under this way, even though he's outside of it. Krishna says whole ninth chapter. He's like, look, I'm, I am within everything, but not everything's in me. He's like, I'm within everything, but don't make the mistake of thinking that ev I've sent like everything, nothing happens without the sanction of the Supreme Lord. And yet he's still aloof from so many things. And I was talking to a friend and we were saying, this is how you kind of come to terms with, well, then why does God let bad things happen to good people? He's like, look, I am there. Yes, true. I am within everything and still simultaneously aloof from a lot of things. And so it's important for us to remember that that principle of surrender. Because when we start surrendering, then Krishna says, then I enter personally. I take, com I take personal control over your lives. Otherwise, he's there, yes, and still aloof. Hmm. Kishore's closing his eyes and nodding his head. <laughs> I, um, I agree with a lot of with everything that Achuta is saying, as usual. And I think that this idea of like, you know, sometimes people get angry or annoyed that there is a hierarchy. And, you know, there's been so much societal distress about this in so many ways, you know, in so many parts of history 
about, you know, down with the hierarchy or it should be all a level playing field and everything should be the same. And we should all have, you know, just, you know, equal opportunity and all this stuff. And I think there's a difference between having equal opportunity and, and being all starting from the same place. And the thing that kept on coming up for me is that, um, that that's not true, right? Like we're all born in different families. We're all born with different circumstances. We're all born with different bodies and body types and different likes and dislikes and inclinations and disinclinations. And when we're talking about boundaries and people just being people and the idea of home and all of this stuff, what really came up for me around this is this idea of really, and this takes a lifetime, if not many lifetimes, but this idea of just knowing who I am, right? So I, I know who I am in, in various different ways, right? It's like, okay, I, I philosophically understand that we're all souls and that we all are part and parcel of God, of Krishna, and that's beautiful and that connects us. But I'm also, you know, this person who was born in this body, who has an ego, who has inclinations and disinclinations, who might like this, who might not like that. This, you know, I might need to put up a boundary for this type of person or not this type of person. And I think that that's actually super duper important to, to know oneself, to like know what you like and what you don't like. And it sounds so simple, but it's not, you know, because I really like what Dayal was mentioning at the beginning. It's like, uh, I think a lot of the times at the expense of, of, of being authentic with who we are, we will just shut areas of ourself down to fit into this segment of society or this devotee, whatever, you know, th way of being and we'll, sh we'll shut it down and then eventually get bitter or resentful about it and be like, oh man, you know, or just feel very out of place or feel like I haven't, you know, um, been true to myself. And this is like something from like, I was, I was thinking about this. I was like, wait a minute, it says this on a Greek temple somewhere. And I looked it up and it's like, there's this temple ancient Greek society, the temple of Apollo at Delphi. It was like this Oracle, you know, people, mm. people like walked like so, 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 so many, like, um, you know, miles and miles to reach this Oracle at Delphi. And there's three inscriptions. And the first one is know thyself. And it's so like simple, but at the same time, it's, it's not because I think that, um, yeah, you know, we, like I said, we, we sacrifice parts of ourselves to fit in or to like be, you know, not get cast out. This is what we were talking about yesterday, right? Not getting cast out of the home, feeling like I'm welcome everywhere I go, you know? Um, and I think that a big reality check sometimes, at least for me, has been in this life of just like, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to be welcome everywhere I go. And that's okay. You know, like maybe people will have whatever about me and that's okay. Not everyone's going to like me you know? And I think that that's a really big, and even in devotee circles, I've come to that conclusion. Not everyone's going to like me. I can respect someone and I can respect them as a practicing, you know, bhakti yogi and et cetera. But that doesn't necessarily mean that our personalities are going to be like, and now we're best friends, you know? <laughs> and um, I think that this, this is a really big misconception that people have around spiritual communities. It's like, everyone's just happy all the time. Everyone just loves each other. Everyone just, you know, just gets along. And it's like, devotees are people too. You know, it's like, we're people too. And um, <laughs> Pasha, hashtag no new friends. <laughs> um, just kidding, yeah. just kidding, not really. <laughs> I, um, I, I had a personal story I wanted to share, but before that you strike something, I took a, I took, when I was at Hunter College, I took a, um, I took an ancient Greek culture class and I wrote an entire essay about know thyself on the Apollo temple. Um, and just cause we're talking about home, I just wanted to also mention the word economy or econ ec economics means to manage the ac accounts or affairs at home. It literally, um, uh, uh, eco is the is the, the 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 Greek word for home, and nomos means the account. So literally, economy was actually the word originated in taking care of things at home. It was centered. There was so much centering around 
the 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 idea of one's home being the foundation of like our stability in life like starting at the 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 the, the nuclear unit level anyways the personal story that i wanted to share um can i share a personal story um this was just this 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 past sunday we had this big in new york city we had this big kirtan in washington square park and i was on my way and i was driving from brooklyn into manhattan and there was a lot going on in the city that day. There was a five borough bike tour. And so like entire highways were shut down and somehow we bypassed that and didn't get stuck in that traffic. But when we got to Manhattan, you know, below Houston street, like in the financial district or wherever it was, I took a turn onto the side street and then there was like this big protest going on. It was like a union protest or something, you know? And I pulled in the side street and I was like, oh, and I went down and it was the, the traffic was stopped and i was like is this going to take forever or is this going to pass in a minute or two and at the at the at the, the the intersection there was this person standing there and she had her hands up and she was like wait 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 and so i pulled up and i stopped and i was trying to get a little closer i was like is this going to last like is this going to last like do i need to turn around or can i just wait for it to because it's going to be five minutes i'll just wait and she came over kind of like in a frenzy and she was like, like, you have to wait. Like if you, if you, she was literally like, if you drive forward, you're going to kill people. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to kill people. I'm not, I'm not here to run people over. She's like, you have to wait. Like if you, like, if you drive forward, you're literally going to kill people. And then like, she called over her friends and like, they brought a bicycle, like a guy with a bicycle, part of like the, the organization, like put his bike in front of him, like a barricade. They started taking videos and pictures of my license plate. And I was like, why are you taking it? So like in, in case like I ran somebody over and I was like sticking my head out the window. I was like, I'm not planning to kill people. And they're like, we've been run over before. And like, we're just taking precautions. And like age of Kali, core and hypocrisy, like my blood started getting up and, I, and like, and all of a sudden like we're in this confrontation. I was like, I'm like, I'm the executive director of a spiritual nonprofit. I got to behave myself here before like, what if they come to Thursday Night Kirtan and they see me hosting the event and like, that's the guy that tried to run us over, you know? And like this whole thing came up and then on the as we five minutes it passed out and we were like there was this whole thing like five of them were there and it was like this whole like escalated thing and then as we're driving through the intersection there were some like police officers like at the end of it and i was like okay like there's some people here bringing some order and so like I, we reached out and waved and said thank you to the police officers and then one of like the protesters guys was like Oh my god i can't believe you just said hail hitler like that was that's so crazy like what are you guys doing like i can't believe that and then we're like what is going on here and then we just like drove past and then we went our way to the kirtan and i was thinking about it and i was like i don't know if he just like misheard or his mind was warped in a certain way or maybe he was like intentionally trying to raise some sort of like thing by some accusation and it like it took like 10 minutes for like the modes of nature to like calm down like with my wife and i and but as i was thinking about it even just today or later i was like i was like obviously this person like maybe i had been hit by a car before or something and was like i was like this is a person who probably has like some trauma in their life and like is really working through some stuff and i was thinking like this is what happens when when part of me was thinking well like she shouldn't be the one directing traffic <laughs> if she's like triggered by these things. And I was thinking about like, this is what happens when we as individuals have so much stuff that we're still going through and processing and still have like maturing to go. And all of a sudden we're leading the revolution or we're thrust into a position of leadership or we're directing the traffic. And sometimes we see people in positions like just because they're standing at the front of a parade directing people or just because they're in a position of making the announcements or they're even in a political leadership position because they got elected somewhere. And all of a sudden there's this massive moral failing or even in spiritual communities sometimes you're talking about like hierarchy or seniority sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that just because someone's been around for a period of time they're senior or they're at the top of a hierarchy you know and we we put people on these pedestals without realizing like people are still working through tremendous amounts of stuff and and we don't always do you know we look at like years of experience years in that's been around or elected to a position without looking at like what is someone's like emotional health and well-being what's someone's like character level like what's their emotional stability 
you know, and without realizing that like everybody is on a journey working through stuff. And it just kind of like, it came home to me of like this idea of like seeing people beyond the position, seeing people beyond like where they're situated in a crowd and like seeing the, the, the human part of people and what they're going through. And even if someone's in a leadership position, like they still have stuff they're processing and working through and giving space for that. And like, and also being cautious, like how we, as you mentioned, like put people up on pedestals because sometimes people lead in the revolution are like <laughs> working through as much stuff as anybody else is. Um, and I like what you said at you to what, what brought that up for me was this idea of like people sometimes are in a certain position and, it, and it, it, it's allowed to change. You know, it doesn't mean that we they're 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 imprinted on that forever. It's like you're in a certain standing in a spiritual community, a political community, a, a, a societal group, and then when somebody has some sort of like falling out or falling down or 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 whatever or struggle or or stumble in the road, we get so bewildered. But it's actually like, oh, they're having a human experience and they're no longer at the place that they were before. It's not like, oh, they're not who I thought they were. No, they're always who they were, but they've just had a stumble and now they've kind of switched modes of nature or whatever. And it's just, life is so fluxing and changing. And that's just, I mean, I'm just kind of spitting out words now, but like, that's just kind of what was coming up for me. This idea of like giving people room to be What's the word they use in like a neuroscience? Plastic, plasticity, plasticity. of like plasticity. You know. Um, so, anyways, that's just me shouting stuff out. Dana said, "Our say, world doesn't give us the grace to O W down and heal slow together. Down. Slow down, and heal together. We get the message to let it go, keep moving, do more. Mental health isn't seen as an actual thing to need to heal. So sometimes it just feels like things just pile on top of someone because we have to keep going, moving, etc." Thank you, Dana. You're going to say something, Kishore? Yeah, I was just going to say that that I agree with, I love that story and I agree with what you're saying that we have to give people the space to heal and whatever. And I also feel like they can heal over there. You know, like sometimes totally. I don't, I don't have to like be there for everyone and be totally open and be like, I'm here for your healing and I understand you're a human and I understand you're going through it. It's like, I can have that understanding and have healthy boundaries and just be like, you know what, crazy lady, I am going to turn around and go the other direction. You know, like this is you, you do your healing or like person in power who is like done whatever in whatever community that I might be a part of turning the car around, you know, I'm going the other way. And she I am. Like <laughs> and she just like, I'm like offering Artie to all of your points. Like, um, <laughs> I, so it, it's so funny. Every time you were speaking, Doyle, I, in my mind, I'm like chiming in. I'm like, yeah, cuz, and then you'd say something and I was like, oh, that's not what I thought. And then I was like, yeah, cuz, and then you would say, you'd say something and you'd like make a point. I was like, oh, that's not what I thought. And I realized I was like, you have so, you, you give so much more grace than me because in my mind, you're like, you know, you know, like clearly this person is trauma, like triggered by, and I was just like, I don't know if she ever got hit by a car. They crazy. <laughs> I'm like, Doyle, turn your car around and go. She could be making it up. The minute, the minute they start taking pictures of my license plate, I'm like, I'm out. What? No, absolutely not. Y'all are moving. I'm leaving. This is not happening. This, this is, this is not going down. This is not a car. We're like, and there's going to be viral videos of us like, like you know and we're, we're probably thinking like they probably got home and we're like oh, it was a tough one today someone tried to run us over we had to bring no, in the barricades no they were not if they thought that that's on them that is on them like mm -hmm. and and that's my problem people come and then they take all their stuff and they've dumped it on you and they're like you triggered me so much i was like i didn't do a daggone thing to you you need to buck up and breathe and if you don't like what's happening over here keep it moving like mm -hmm. No one told you that it was protest time in the middle of the street. Mm. Move. We were Move. like, I can't, I can't believe that we bypassed the five borough bike tour and not an ounce of traffic. We missed it. We, we missed it. And then it's like, 
protest. And, and, and I'm like, wait a second, but, but who 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 approved this protest? Like, I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm such okay. And even in my astrological chart, there's like a whole thing. It's like you are iffy about authority. I'm like, and I never really thought I was, but it's actually true. I'm so <laughs> scrutinizing about authority. And so even when it comes to devotees, like there are some people and, and they're like, well, you know, you can't, you can't go over there and do that. And I'm like, said who? <laughs> and they're like, well, I wasn't guy. going to, but now I definitely am. They're like, that guy said, and I'm like, who the heck is that guy? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. He woke up and put on his dhoti one fold at a time. I put on my sari one fold at a time. And everybody's doing things one fold at a time. Like put your pants on one leg at a time. It's not so different. Who mm. said? So I, I yeah, I you you give so much more grace. And my sister's really good at that. Like she's always like the benefit of the doubt person. And between the two of us, we make a really good sitcom. But like between the two of us, she's always like, well, maybe it's because they thought about it this way. And I'm like, I don't care what they thought. <laughs> I, I'm like, what? But why did they come tell me? Like I'm like, why did they yeah. come talk to me about it? Like I, I don't care what they thought. I have a problem. And and so there was one time and I felt really bad about it after there was like a there was a Prabhupada disciple and he happened to come up to me after a kirtan and he was like, you know, I just want to say thank you. And I thought he was saying thank you for my kirtan. And he was like, well, you know, I just want to th say thank you because you're not saying Ramo and so many other people are saying Ramo and you're saying Rama. And I was really quiet and I was quiet for a really long time until the man said, he said, because you see that boy in the yellow shirt and he happened to be talking about my family member, Keshava. And I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. Mm. He said, what? I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. I actually don't want to continue this conversation. Mm. And he was like, well, you know, I, I'm not, I was like, look, it's getting into a point where criticizing devotees and I don't want to do that. And he's like, well, mm. I wasn't going to criticize. I was like, but I'm criticizing in my mind. And so now this conversation is no longer mm. for my spiritual benefit because now I'm criticizing people in my mind. And this conversation has not brought up anything good. It could have ended five minutes ago. And he was mm. like, well, I just want to, I was like, I don't care what we want to do anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. And then he's like, mm. oh, well, and then he walked away. And then some people were like, you know, he's a Prabhupada disciple. I was like, am I not? I'm a Radnath Maharaj disciple. <laughs> like, I was like, mm. I, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I was like, mm. I was quiet as long as he was talking about me. I don't know what he was about to say about anybody else, but I'm going to stop you right there. It's not necessary at this point. Like, I was like, I was really quiet. I was super, I was, I took the whole thing as long as he said whatever he wanted about me. The minute we moved to somebody else, why am I giving this the room and the respect and all the things? Mm. At some point, it might actually endanger my spiritual creeper, my spiritual mm. beach, which is so small and fragile. There is no sense. And Gorgovinda Maharaj always used to say, Vaishnava Aparad is a mad elephant defense all the stuff you've done to build up your spiritual garden and then a crazy elephant comes and just stomps all over it and so at a certain point i you know i was kind of raised with this idea it's like i don't care who you are sure mm. okay fine i can listen up until a point and i can give that silent respect and then at a certain point i'm like devotees are just people i and there's no there shouldn't be any harm in saying this is detrimental to me i don't want to continue this and I think that that's where we mm. get into really dangerous positions by thinking spiritual people are going to have the same grace and have the same care for us as we have for us. Sometimes they're just thinking about what's going on in their head and their thought process. Sometimes it's really important, like you said, to know yourself and say, this is not going to be good for me. This might be dangerous and detrimental for me. So I'm going to stop you right here. We can go to a certain mm. point and we don't have to keep going. I feel like so much abuse has happened in our community. So mm. many things have happened because we are not able or we feel unable to say, this is making me uncomfortable. I don't mm. want to do it. Mm. Mor moral of the story, never block a Chittagopi in traffic. <laughs> Ever. We, we got to take away from Dana K. I want to read real quick. You sure is about to say something, but we are, we are at time. And so I'd love to get a, I'd love to get some takeaways from, from Kimberly. Um, anybody else has any takeaways they want to share in the chat? Please, please feel free to put them there. We have some takeaways from Kimberly. Then, then we'll see what Kishore and her toots are walking away with. 
Yeah, so that's some takeaways today. So I have, um, it's important to know ourselves and who we are. And then the idea of sacrificing parts of ourselves to feel accepted and eventually getting to a place where it's okay to not feel welcomed everywhere. Um, hierarchies and standings can change. And lastly, devotees are just people too. We can give people the space to work through their stuff. Mm, give people the space to work through their stuff over there. <laughs> Um, Kishore and Atuta, what are you guys walking away with today? What are you taking home? I have more questions. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm taking home exactly because I, I agree with so much of what Atuta's saying. And I think that what, what she was speaking about this experience, that happens in all types of um, spiritual communities, not just our own and all types of hierarchical communities as well, where it's like, um, uh, yeah. And so I think it's something that can be quite universal. You know, it happens on a societal basis too. It's like, why do we feel, and I have the same streak. I'm, I'm not so great with authority either. And, um, and, but this question of like, why, I kind of want to dig into this a little bit tomorrow, like our relationship to authority or our relationship to hierarchy and why we can't, why we feel like we can't just say the, 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 the real thing that we're feeling um, or why we can't move into that, you know, I'm gonna call it an uncomfortable space, but why is it an uncomfortable space? Why can't it just be a real space? You know, why can't it just be an authentic space of I'm saying what I feel? And I feel like so often we feel that we can't do that because it's gonna get uncomfortable or it's gonna get awkward or there's gonna be repercussions. So I'm really interested in, in maybe talking about our relationship mm. to authority. Mm, thank you. Chuta, what are you walking away with? Um, for me, I, I kind of personally want to balance out a little bit that idea of giving people the benefit of the doubt and giving grace, but also still having my hard set spaces where I'm like, I can give you that space up until a certain point you don't get to have all the space you just don't get to um and and that idea is so difficult to balance even when you even when you see like a work home life balance you know and i was also always one about that like i it used to bother me so much if i was in a relationship with someone they were working 14 hours a day i'm like but why is it that it's so easy for you to say okay to the boss who you don't love and no to me the person you're supposed to love mm. And honestly, that's how we treat Krishna. We mm -hmm. say yes to everything else. And then Krishna's like, hey, can you give me one, two hours of your day? And we're like, I'm so sorry. I'm way too busy for you. And Krishna's like, but I love you the most. <laughs> how is it so easy for us to say yes to all the things we don't like, the things that make us uncomfortable, the abusive mm -hmm. positions that we put ourselves in. And then we say no to Krishna and his divine love all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a balance yeah. I'm trying to come to. Thank you. Thank you. Dana wrote, just want to read the chats here. I, I like how, how you said, I think she's speaking what Kishore said. It doesn't matter. Oh no, what Chuta said. I'm criticizing in my mind. So it's like taking responsibility for the thoughts that are coming up in your own mind, not just other people's thoughts that are coming at you. Um, I appreciate just the evolution of the conversation this week. You know, we started with home as a place you belong and then be your authentic self to down with authority. <laughs> <laughs> It's always going to get to that. It's always going to get there. Um, quick, 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 quick takeaway from me. Um, I remember Rana Somi once said, you know, in, just in the material world, we shouldn't be surprised when things go wrong. We should actually be surprised when things go right. Because the, the, the climate, the nature of this place is, is entropy. Things disintegrate. And it's, it's, a, it's a place of, of chaos. It, it really is. I mean, the, the, the name for the spiritual world is Vaikunta, that place without anxiety. So the material world is, is wrought with so many just reversals of, of life. It's, it's that correctional facility. It's that testing ground. And I think in this conversation, I, for me, it kind of transposed that thought to almost like we shouldn't be surprised when we see something ugly in somebody else or when we see somebody like deviating from the perfect standard of behavior because it's like we're all going through it we're all working through it that's why we're here that's why we're in the material world we've got stuff to work on you know you're not gonna find you know high standing moral citizens in a correctional facility 
And so, you know, it's almost kind of like, and it's not like expecting the worst in people because that can, that can degrade real quick, but it's almost like just that veil removed of illusion of reality that's like, oh, everyone's working through it. We shouldn't be surprised. We should be understanding and compassionate and have a mature outlook, et cetera. And so I was just sort of uh, um, bringing that point. So that's what I'm, I'm walking away with this, trying to have a more mature understanding of how I look at people. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Achuta Kishore, Martha. Oh, we always got to get a wisdom bomb from Martha. Everything is a test. Are we ready to pass that test? Yes, we are all trying our best. Love it, Martha. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. We're here every day. If you like what you heard, please share it. Please share it with a friend um, and tag us so we can see you in the journey and we want to connect more and more. We're here every day. We'll see you tomorrow. Be well. Tell someone you love them. Take care. Bye-bye.